Hey guys, welcome to the J Squared Horror Podcast. My name is Josh. And I'm Jake. And on today's episode, what movie are we going to be discussing, buddy? We are covering 2007's Trick or Treat, directed by Michael Doherty. Mm, Trick or Treat, a horror Halloween anthology. Probably one of the best ones out there. It is the best one out there. But before we get super into the episode, what would you like to let the fans know, bud? As always, <clears> like <throat> and subscribe on YouTube. We are also available on Spotify. Yep. As well as Anchor. Yep. Google. Yep. And Apple. Yes. You can find us on Instagram, J Squared Horror Podcast, link tree in the bio, new episodes every Thursday. Well, every single Thursday. Well, <clears throat> minus the last one except for last yeah <laughs> we had to take a nice little mental break uh before the holiday season but now we are back yes we're back we we do not anticipate missing any other episodes of course unless something in life gets in the way but it's october yeah for all of you guys that haven't listened to us yet we as we said are the j squared horror podcast we are two best friends who get together every week watch a movie discuss things about the movie and uh anything horror related we do themes and different things like that but basically we just try to be a true to podcasting horror podcast yeah it's just conversation yeah about different topics yeah we want basically we want you guys to yell and scream at whatever you're listening to us on because we are fucking idiots <laughs> yeah <clears throat> we like opening up discussions for uh all different types of horror fans <clears throat> so this movie trick or treat is man it is it is very very good and it it just you always worry with with many movies we've talked about does it does it stand up? Does it hold hold true to the test of time with other movies that have come out? I mean, obviously, in two thousand seven, the found footage anthology whole base thing wasn't really booming. This is one of the first ones that I personally remember. Doesn't mean I'm correct, but it is one of the first ones I remember. One of the coolest facts about Trick or Treat is it was never theatrically released. Hmm. This was a straight two DVD horror film that is being released this year in theater which it's is about time yeah it's very exciting and they just greenlit trick or treat 2 uh it's actually in production as we speak this movie has such a strong following yeah for a movie that wasn't released in theaters yeah i mean it's crazy like i know you fans on spotify can't see it but i bought this uh sam lollipop from a spirit halloween probably four years ago this little sucker it's nice don't get me wrong i've had it that whole time it was 18 damn dollars mm. it's just a little straw and some plastic worth it yeah I, I i tried to dress up as sam one year and how did that go? it's fucking stupid to be honest with you <laughs> sam um, is like a kid it's kid sized so when you're six foot two well over 200 pounds uh doesn't quite work <laughs> you look very awkward um and one thing that i found i i got to, i own this movie on dvd which is i can't believe it it's rare for me to own these movies that we're covering uh i actually own this one on dvd on blu-ray and uh i was kind of listening to some of the special features and <clears throat> it's it was a it was a kid actor because they knew that either a little person or an animatronic couldn't walk and act like they wanted it to be childlike. They wanted Sam to be childlike. Why? Sam is supposed to represent Halloween okay. and following the rules of Halloween and trick or treating and, and different things like that. So he's an enforcer. So what better to enforce a children based holiday than a child sized creature okay so he is the embodiment of the enjoyment of halloween um not necessarily or, the enjoyment the rules well which, isn't in fact well shouldn't you like enjoy it you should enjoy it I feel because like, this movie it's not like if you're just doing halloween the right way like nothing's gonna mess with well, you really isn't the right way enjoying it yeah, I'm just saying, like, his job isn't necessarily to enforce the enjoyment. His job is to enforce the rules, which, yeah. in fact, would then equal enjoying Halloween. So I guess, yes. Okay. 
and I just completely talked in a circle. <laughs> I guess, yes, you're right. <laughs> it reminds me of like Halloween 3, almost. Wait. Season of the Witch? Yeah. How so? With, uh, what's his name? Cochran. Mm-hmm. And his whole thing about people either not respecting Halloween mm-hmm. or not celebrating it the correct way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wonder if that played into this at all. It might have. He, uh, the director, actually thought of this uh, Sam creature in like a mini, is either a mini story or something. He drew it up before, but this had been a long time coming for him. He, This is something he was very excited about to bring Sam to life in film. And good job, buddy. Yeah. Because he is an adorable little pumpkin demon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, the <laughs> fact that under his mask is a... It's like a jack-o'-lantern. A pumpkin head? Yeah, it's, a pump, a it's a pumpkin head, yeah. Also, pumpkin head, good movie. Yeah. But yeah, it's... When I first saw, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, you were... Def- I think you were definitely expecting, like, a zombie-type kid. Yeah. Like, a- a- anyone watching this you movie. You knew it wasn't, like, an actual kid. Like a skeleton or, like, something like that. Because that little fucker was too evil to be an actual kid. Yeah. But uh, when, he gets sh- <laughs> when he gets shot and the pumpkin guts just come out, yeah. I, was like, I was like, one of my favorite parts. I was like, holy, this this little thing's just a pumpkin. Yeah, this thing, <laughs> em- it, it embodies Halloween. But they said, it, it, I, I, you know, I might mispronounce this, but Halloween is based off of uh, another celebration it's like Samhain or something of that nature or as Dr. Loomis said Sam Hain Sam Hain <laughs> um, where a lot of the depictions are a pumpkin headed person hmm. so that's why once Sam loses his mask they wanted to go that route is that why they have jack-o'-lanterns ja- of- yeah well jack-o'-lantern was based off of a guy named Jack who uh, what was it Jack he got like in trouble or something and like had to like he couldn't he wasn't accepted into heaven or hell so he's like almost stuck in purgatory and he actually cut open a turnip as a jack-o'-lantern but once those people that had that tradition of cutting up turnips came to america and found pumpkins they were like whoa these are way better to cut and put faces on. I'm sure they are. And that's why the lighting of a jack-o'-lantern is a... To, in this movie, as you know, it protects you from bad things. Yeah. So that's why it's called a, a jack-o'-lantern? Yeah. Nice. Because some guy named Jack was stuck in purgatory was with he, a turnip. Was he turning the turnips into lanterns? Yeah. To guide him. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I, cool. I, dude, I'm so happy I watched these special features yeah. because I wouldn't have known this yeah, that, <laughs> three days ago. Okay. <laughs> and I could be wrong. I was watching. <laughs> yeah. This could be I, made up information. <laughs> excuse me. I could have had some crazy, vivid dream last night after watching Trick or Treat where I'm just like, About Jack, turnips. pumpkins, turnips. <laughs> wait, Jack Skellington? No, wait, what? Ah. Yeah. Um, I know. I had to do that just for you. Uh, um <laughs> So, yeah, this movie's really cool. So, I know we've talked on the podcast before, any of you guys that have listened to us, uh, about, especially with our, I think, was that our most recent episode, VHS? It was, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's what happens when you take a week off. Um, We were very upset, both of us, at an anthology movie is supposed to tie everything into either the same night or the same idea by different things and trick or treat does it perfectly it does it does it very well it it, yeah fuck i mean it's you realize it after you've watched it obviously multiple times but even for the first time you pick up on it because they do it so well yeah um but you know it starts off with that couple the robot and like the pirate or whatever he was yeah that chick hates halloween yeah she's not a fan what you find out what happens to somebody that hates halloween in this this particular neighborhood or town because uh the the husband or the the boyfriend or whatever he was was trying to get some hanky panky and she was like nah I want to take these decorations down, but who, who, who in their right minds is taking down decorations? Like the same night. The same night. Like that's it's probably like nine o'clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nine, nine thirty. Yeah. Uh, and she wants to take down these decorations and he's like, 
like can we can we go upstairs and put on that movie nope and she's like no and then he's like come on and then she's like fine i'll be up there in like five minutes well she doesn't come up in five minutes she does not because she gets killed by sam dismembered and hung up as a decoration yeah with this the lollipop shoved in her mouth with a light because that's what he killed her with and in that scene you see different people walking by that are characters later on in the movie which is the great thing about anthology when it's done the correct way it can be minor things like you just walking by someone yeah because when they pull up in their car they kind of slam on the brakes and a little girl with a, a, a basket is walking her across the street you find out that she's a character later mm-hmm. there's also a group of kids walking down the street that are the group of kids you see later so yeah it all ties together very well yeah um is there any particular story uh that you didn't care for that you weren't as big a fan of yep which one was it the one with the uh with a werewolf you didn't like the werewolf girls no werewolves were boring as fuck to me anyway yeah you're a werewolf hater so them i was not interested although I, nope there's no redeeming quality never mind there are redeeming qualities I th- I thought i'll tell I you had, what there are i thought i had one i don't okay so in 2007 when this movie came out okay. i was a young whippersnapper okay. obviously did not see this movie in 2007 but when i did i was very much a fan of the female physique and okay. this group of werewolf ladies were all very attractive and they use those attractive qualities to hunt their prey so what you're saying is if you were in that town they would have picked you up and killed you as well probably got it definitely yeah yeah i'm probably getting eaten by the werewolf ladies which is a cool way to go out okay yeah if there's a top tier way to go out in this movie definitely probably that yeah i just i wasn't feeling it and i feel like as shitty as it sounds it's solely based on the fact that they're werewolves. Yeah. I just find it so uninteresting. Yeah, you hate werewolves. I'm like, nah, I'm good. You you are a hater of werewolves. Yeah, they're, they're boring. Now, if they were like vampires, I would have thought, eh, which still is not interested, but <laughs> a little more interested. Which is interesting because there's a, char- there's a principle character Mm -hmm. that you meet in this movie Mm -hmm. who is the guy that puts stuff in your candy so one of the rules of halloween are to always check your candy which kids out there listening to our podcast always check your candy and if you watch this movie at an appropriate age you will find out why so this this kid that is from a bad santa Oh, yeah, he wasn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> He's the bad Santa kid. Uh, is walking down the street, smashing jack o' lanterns, just being a little piece of shit. I, I, he, I, I'm very happy what happened to him <laughs> happened to him. It's a shitty way to go out, but this principal guy, who seems very trustworthy at first, no, he's very creepy from the start. But, yeah, he was. You know, he ends up poisoning the kid, and then some other crazy stuff happens. But it's, it's you know, this movie in particular is hard not to kind of bring it back to, like, the Shining episodes or the Doctor Sleep episodes, because talking about this movie in a chronological order kind of makes sense because of how, you know, the anthology-based thing so kind of like a vhs how we told all the stories Mm -hmm. this one ultimately kind of plays like that so just you know bear with us guys it's fun um that guy ends up killing this kid and then goes to bury him in the backyard Mm -hmm. which a, a dog comes through the fence and ends up being another guy's character later that directly ties in like even later on like you see it from the other side of the fence him talking that like it was so it was done so fucking well man like it made sense everything it wasn't a stretch it wasn't some crazy far-fetched tying in now some of the stories were a little bit outlandish yeah but at the end of the day it all made sense so my least favorite story is i gotta say the the rock quarry why you know i get that sam isn't real yeah and i'm okay with that aspect of this movie okay 
So this, the rock quarry was a bus driver was paid by parents to kill their kids that were weird. Yeah. So he goes, I don't even know what his plan was, per se, but I guess he was just going to let the bus go off the cliff. Anyway, he, was, he was going to hop off? Yeah. Was he just going to eat himself out the door? Yes. <laughs> I think I'm like eight episodes in a row uh, getting my favorite word in there. Um, so yeah, he's like, he's got them all chained up. He's giving them candy. And then one of the vampire kids escapes and then drives the bus off the cliff. Poor kid. He gave it, his, he gave it a valiant effort, but failed. But I don't like the fact that the other group of kids go down into the quarry to scare the little girl, and it ends up being like those ghosts were real. I don't know. I didn't necessarily yeah, like the I mean, that, that bus ghost. It does. I mean, yeah. You didn't like it. Okay, that's cool. I mean, it, it, because it ends up tying in really well at the end of the movie, so it's even tough to say that. I guess I really don't have a least favorite, but if I had to pick one, like I didn't like that lead up, I guess. Okay. Uh, because like... It just doesn't make sense that, like, a group of parents, instead of just, like, you know, like, just dealing with their kids, they paid the bus driver to collectively kill to kill all of them. Yeah. And they were probably just, like, special needs kids. Like, I mean, probably. I mean, that's all you can think. They obviously weren't misbehaved because they weren't, like, screaming or, like, f- until they found out they were trapped on the bus. They were very well behaved, well mannered. It sucked because, like, I guess it's kind of sad. It's like one of the sadder stories on the on the movie. Yeah, they're all wearing masks and stuff. Yeah, they're all just trying to participate in some Halloween type activity. Yeah. And the bus driver's like, "My parent, your parents paid me to kill you, but here's yeah. a here's a piece of candy. Why give them candy, dude? They're gonna die." True. You think he was just gonna leave the bus there and let them just die? Yeah. I don't know, dude. That makes even less sense. That's what I'm saying. None of it really. <laughs> you get off this bus and what was the plan, bus that? driver? What was the plan? I guess yeah, put like a rock on the gas pedal, maybe. Okay, so what was your favorite one? My favorite story. Um, I gotta say the the principal character's complete arc. Everything okay. that ended up happening with and to him. Okay. Because, like I was saying earlier, like he is this guy that was poisoning kids, killed a kid, and then like showed his son his head, and they're like carving it as like a jack o' lantern type thing. Oh. But then you find out that he goes to the parade and he's like dressed as a vampire and he's like eating chicks, but like he's not a vampire. Yeah. So that I agree that was my favorite as well, but it made kind of no sense either. that part didn't make like i get the poisoning in the razor blades and the candy bars yeah like, i get that okay that's fucked up but i get it but now you're going out on a date remember because he even says i have a date later yeah obviously it was a date with a girl that he ends up biting a bunch mm-hmm. and making her bleed out but it was kind of cool that they when they left her like when he left her everybody was just like oh that's part of halloween yeah and then she <laughs> ran into the chick who's dressed as a robot, robot. Yeah. yep everything ties together beautifully it's but okay. then he sees red riding hood mm-hmm. who's one of the werewolf characters like, thinks that he can get her and then ends up being her first victim as a werewolf lady yeah so that's why i think that's my favorite story because it probably tied in more than even sam did as far as like across the board character arcs okay. in this anthology All right. and you hate him you don't like this guy he the principal? yeah don't tell me you liked him mm. I didn't he hate He poisons him. children. A child. Well, that's if that's that's the Only one for sure. One. He did have one body in his backyard. He was like moving around and shit. Yeah, what was that? Because it was like a clown sleeve or some yeah. shit that grabbed him. Yeah, I don't know. I did think it was funny though because he's like trying to be quiet yeah. while like trying to beat like kicking a kid in the face like multiple things because it wasn't the other kid because yeah. you know he's decapitated. Yeah. This is a different kid. That's a different kid. Okay. Well, I guess you gotta think as a principal you deal with kids every single day yeah you definitely want to kill a couple it's your one time of the year fuck it i know i would have been on that principal's number one list he's like oof i'm hoping josh comes by my house tonight because he's getting poisoned and killed because i was not very nice i was a a class clown in school so principals weren't a fan of me so it, it it makes sense that he would do it that way but i mean i don't know i feel like the whole vampire thing to me like didn't make sense 
I just didn't get why that had to be in there. Yeah. Like, he could have went to the parade on a date and did everything else the same. Yeah. The date could have been with Red Riding Hood instead of yeah. the other lady. And like him it, not dressed up and doing all that other crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a surprise when you find out it was him. Because you didn't know the vampire character was him. True. Until the werewolf part. Yeah. But we now know that he was that vampire character. Yeah. And, like, how many different versions of a piece of shit are you going to be? You like killing kids? Okay, you're a principal. You're mean. Why random, you know, adult women? Yeah, I don't know. Because you're you're, making, you're compensating for something, buddy, because you're killing kids and pretty ladies. Yeah. So, I guess it was making me think maybe throughout the night he had killed other people, women, too. Hey, this, yeah, this is an every Halloween thing. Who knows? Has to be, but there's no way this town of obviously kid killing, evil pumpkin demon children like there, you know, the cops just don't exist on this Halloween night in Ohio. I do believe, as we know, how cops are in horror, in movies. horror movies. They're not good. And you're just like, oh man, this chick's all bloody left here at the parade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, there's a like six missing kids, and there's oh, there's a decapitated kid's head here. No, I'm going to call the night. <laughs> it's just follow, follow the rules, guys. Yeah, it's just Halloween. Follow, <laughs> follow the rules of Halloween. Yeah, you're good. Um, <clears throat> did you like um? So the principal was cool did you like where sam appeared and what he did yeah as far as me like that he attacked that dude or do you mean like in general he, well, he, he appeared after the rock quarry incident left that girl alone he killed the first girl yeah, that's why i think it's just respecting it is respecting the traditions and the rules of halloween yeah, and enjoying halloween as long yeah. as you enjoy it and you're good he won't bother you because he also took candy from the principal yeah he snatched the shit out of it yeah and that ends up being the razor blade candy that he cuts the leg of of the guy in the house crazy yeah when he peels it yeah that's that same piece of candy he got aggressively from the guy so he knew i think that was the only purpose in sam being at that guy's house you think so oh yeah there's no quinky dinks in this movie buddy (laughs) Everything in this movie happens for a reason. I thought he was just out there just trick-or-treating. No. I mean, he's got a mission. Okay. He was like, all right, this guy's still got jack-o'-lanterns lit. He's handing out candy. Yeah. His time would have come eventually from Sam. But he got done in another way. Mm. But then you got the, I guess it's a somewhat of a final showdown between Sam and the old guy. Which... I found interesting. One, I guess knowing he was the bus driver. You find out, yeah. I mean, she see it a little differently, but mm-hmm. other than that, I, I don't really see why he would like attack him. Well, he wasn't participating in Halloween. Okay. He had no jack-o'-lanterns lit. So that's the only reason why he was respecting Halloween. I mean, he wasn't. It just so happens Sam didn't know he was the bus driver. Sam doesn't care about that. That we know of. He doesn't. Because think about it. When he's given a piece of candy, he leaves. Hmm. He's like, cool. They have a, a, a showdown. They do. They go at it. They duke it out. Sam gets shot, gets a hand removed. Dude man gets sliced up, thrown down some stairs. All it took was a piece of candy. He trick-or-treated with Sam. And then Sam was like, bet. All right. I'm done. Thanks. <laughs> and that little creepy ass kid walk away. He does. It's creepy, man. And then you show the, he goes to participate in trick or treating and then gets done in by the kids on, from the bus that yeah. were awoken by the group of kids that tried to trick the other girl. Yeah. So speaking of the kids that went down. Yeah. I did like the fact that she was like. The fact that when she had her chance to turn on them, she immediately, without hesitation, just took it. Yeah. The witch. I thought that was interesting, though. Well, I mean, they played a evil prank on her. Okay, but they're going to die now. Yeah. So the fact that she reached for, like, nope, (laughs) I'm not going to help you. What would you do in that situation? You're that girl. You're that witch that's been picked on for years. 
And the cute boy you thought was being nice to you mm-hmm. just uses his looks to scare the shit out of you. Damn. Yeah, that's a they're they're coming of age age. You know, they're they're definitely probably like twelve, thirteen. Well, they were. They're dead now. Yeah, they're well, dead, we man. think they're dead. We don't know for sure. They're dead. I mean, I'm pretty sure they are. But yeah, she also knew the rules of Halloween. She kept the jack o' lanterns lit. She never let her jack o' lantern go out. Yeah, just uh, just celebrate fully Halloween and you're good. Yeah, like I'm gonna go carve a pumpkin tomorrow. The second you try to like end it too early, you're done for. Just know, guys, Halloween is the greatest holiday in existence. I would agree. It is. For people that enjoy life and are fun people, they love Halloween. We love Halloween. I'd still be trick-or-treating now if it wasn't creepy. Even now? Well, like, I'd be, like, going to houses, knocking on doors. So you'd be trick-or-treating? Yeah. Okay. As a 30-year-old man. No one would give you anything. No. I'd probably have the cops called on me. Yeah. Which is not fair. Who makes... You'd probably get, like, two houses down, there'd be the cops there. Yeah. I mean, luckily, I have a nephew, so I, like, get to walk around on Halloween night, and Mm -hmm. just, he gives me all the best candy in the world, because he likes the stupid stuff. He's not a big candy guy, which you aren't either. I'm not either. So, So, what was your favorite Halloween candy? My favorite Halloween candy? Yeah. Shit, dude. It's easy. It's so lame. What is it? It's fucking Tootsie Roll, dude. Tootsie Roll. I fucking love Tootsie Roll. It's the, one of the lamest mm. candies. You start eating it, you start drooling. Ugh. Yeah, it was. I mean, obviously, like Reese's and Snickers, and when, when you get a full sized candy bar, that was always really great. Um, one There was always a house in my grandparents' neighborhood growing up that gave you a bag of popcorn. Yeah. Which, that's as a kid, that's I would, that's pretty common, I'd, be, I'd be irritated. I'm like, yeah. bitch, this is, this is candy time. What I didn't like is when people would give those generic, like, black and orange wrapped candy. It was like, you know, it's like Charleston Chews. <laughs> it was like those, but like not as good. Yeah, yeah. I hate the just random hard candies that like every like ninety year old woman would give you. You're just like, great, thanks for going to your church and yeah. grabbing a handful <laughs> of candies to give me on Halloween. I also hate it, and you know, it's like I get it. There are certain <laughs> religions that aren't too keen on the idea of this holiday because mm-hmm. it is based around a lot of more evil stuff okay but when a, a, you'd go to a house you have your light on which means you are welcoming me to come to your house yeah. i knock on your door okay. i'm dressed as an evil clown right okay. and you give me a bible passage with like a peppermint tape to it i should legally be able to slit your throat with a lollipop like this like <laughs> i get it why sam did what he did because that's just some dumb shit like don't don't participate Turn off your light. Watch Hallmark movies. But don't give me a pamphlet with a fucking peppermint on it as my treat. It's just trying to save your soul. That's all. My soul has been gone <laughs> well before I was trick-or-treating. So, joke's on you guys. <laughs> I wish I knew their names. Probably a Brenda, like a Barbara. Have you ever had God. that person who gave you, like, fruits or, like, a toothbrush? I did get toothbrushes, but they were, like, the... They weren't even, like good toothbrush yeah they were like the like these ones like, yeah like you like open it and like it, it like opens and you like use the other part to go into yeah. the other part like yeah. i get it my teeth are going to be rotten after this holiday but i don't need to be reminded of it while i'm participating yeah. <laughs> i also like as an adult like now like i'll go around with my nephew and my sister because trick-or-treating seeing like it, obviously it's really fallen off the last I'd say 10 years. I agree. Um, you have a daughter. You know, you've probably seen the digression of yeah. trick-or-treating through all the years. But it really makes me sick because my nephew's 11. You know, it used to be massive, massive crowds of kids and so many lights on and so many decorations. And and then, like, na- like it was, like, I think two or three years ago where, like, some some parents would have like little like airplane bottles or like spiked hot chocolates and they'd like grab the parents and be like you guys need a treat too and you know they kind of give you something more adult like for walking around and that was always cool to me um 
you know what I hate with a passion? What? The parents that bring out infants to trick or treat so that they get fucking candy. That should be more illegal than me trick or treating as a 30 year old man. Why is that? Dude, it's an infant. Okay. You, give it some time. It's not eating that candy. Y'all's fat asses want that candy. And I get it. I'm a fat ass too. I want candy. <laughs> but there's just something just you walk up to the door holding an infant and it's like wearing like an alligator costume and you knock and then you like and you like show the baby. It's selfish as shit, first of all. All right. Show the, baby. the baby shouldn't be out there in that weather anyway. <laughs> that thing's probably got the immune system of the worst. But yeah, there's just something about it that just irks me. Just, like it's an infant. Just sh- show the baby. <laughs> it's just showing the baby so you can get a damn Kit Kat. It's just fuck, man. Get out of my way. My nephew's trying to get some candy. He's out here working hard for his candy. I don't know, man. There's just something. It's like one of those like pet peeves that don't necessarily make sense, but it's fucking there. <laughs> when I one see that shit. used to bother me, <laughs> which was one thing, or for two things. One thing, when the kids are giving little to no effort in their costumes, I yeah. hate that. Well, you got to think though. Like I was broke as a kid. So like not my co- my costumes weren't always top tier. There was, there was effort there, though. Right? There was there was always effort, because like when I said zombie, like when I said evil clown earlier, there was a time where we did not have money to get me a costume. But my friends were like, "Dude, we're going trick or treating." I was like, I don't, "I'm not, I'm not, I can't go in clothes. They don't give me candy." And they're like, "No, nah, we got you." They had a rainbow fro, and like a rainbow like romper like yeah. a or a jumper like suit right yeah and i was looking at myself in the mirror and i was like fuck no i'm not going out there like this i was like 10 i was like there's no way i'm going out there like this so i go up to my my friend's mom and i'm like my friend at the time her name was sarah was a vampire so she had the white and blood makeup and i was mm-hmm. like yo zombie me up so i ended up you know it ended up looking kind of cool but yeah it was a free costume that i put some white and blood on me people were terrified of me that year (laughs) like the least effort i probably ever did as a kid was one of my most terrifying years i can remember going as inspector gadget Mm. one year okay trench coat and it was just trench coat and remember those like (laughs) shitty back in the day like plastic math with the string on the back of it Mm mm-hmm just one of those that's it yeah yeah give effort though so my second thing is when you knock on the door mm-hmm. and you don't say trick or treat. Yeah, you like the person. Why the fuck are you here? The person that opens the door should be able to punch a child yeah. in the face. Which this sounds like I'm very mean. Well, if your parents say, say trick or treat, first of all, don't coach them on what to say. You should have coached them before you left the house. Yeah. Say thank you. Like, if your kid's not saying thank you after saying trick yeah. or treat, I'm hey, allowed to trip. Do them. me a favor. Bring that fucking candy back. <laughs> Have you ever handed out candy on trick or treat? Yeah. That is honestly, other than trick or treating, that is one of the funnest parts of Halloween. I can remember at my parents' house a few years ago. Yeah. I was dressed as Jason Voorhees. Yeah. A, f- a favorite. And just sitting on the porch <laughs> with the candy, like, right in front yep. of me. And I'm just sitting there. And just watching kids walk up. So terrified. Oh, shit. Is he, is he going to move? Yeah, they think you're a prop. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just sitting there. <laughs> Smiling and in the mask. for a few, I just let think of the candy and not move at <laughs> yep. all. Yep. When I saw some kids weren't giving the effort. Ooh, walked, they're on your just, list. I would spring forward <laughs> and just watch them. And their parents be like, the parents were a little upset. <laughs> they get a little mad, yeah. I'm like, dude, you got some girl coming up in a you know Barbie outfit, and Jake's just like, yeah. Rawr. nope, I don't like that. <laughs> if so you're not the, dressed as Jason Voorhees, he's, he's gonna get you. So as the night, <laughs> night went on, I was now just stand at the end of the street. Yeah, just stand there. Yeah, and then watch people walk by, and they're looking at me. I'd never <laughs> look at them. Just yeah. look forward, just stand there, fist balled, and just stand there, cane breathing. And just yep. you know, doing the, the breathing, <laughs> and they're just like, "What the fuck is going on with this dude?" <laughs> Wasn't he passed now at Ken like an hour ago? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't he scaring kids over there on yeah this street? Yeah, now I'm scaring adults. You also had uh, in your neighborhood one of the dopest guys that did 
Like oh yeah, horror like Halloween houses. Yeah. I met him when I was working at Terminex, dude. I got to go that, look yeah. at his shed that was full of animatronics from all the years that he's yeah, done it. I remember him chasing me down the street with, yeah. with a chainsaw. He goes all out. He does. That's a cool dude. I wish I knew his name. Um, that's a really cool house because I, I I don't live in a house where I'm able to do it because I live in like a mother in law suite. But that's always been something. Yeah, I thought you know when you're thinking about like oh when I'm an adult one day but there's still plenty I've always wanted to do that like really go out be that house that everybody wants to go to yeah. whether it's the candy or the, the decorations and do like a little walk through through the backyard or something Yeah, it's just something for people that have loved Halloween for as long as we have and there's there's many of us out there just unfortunately kids today and society today kind of uh ruined <laughs> uh ruined halloween for a lot of people and it's not even our movies first of all um our movies have been around a lot longer than any of these kids are aware but um it's just you know uh, parents being too uh worried and, and lazy to go walk around a neighborhood with their kids um for many years houses didn't participate and then there was like that covid thing where like you couldn't trick-or-treat i'm like that doesn't make sense because everybody has masks on um but they were really cool did you see some of the shoots that people were doing when covid happened they do like candy shoots yeah don't like that i also don't like when people just leave candy out but with, with the take one sign yeah, well, don't, no. don't take more than one. First of all, I'm not going to take just one. <clears throat> Hubie Halloween will get you. Two, just... Hubie Dubois. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, dude. That's going to be the next episode. I just decided <laughs> we are covering Hubie Halloween. I'm down for I'm that. I'm so down for that, dude. Um, It's just, yeah, dude. Uh, <clears throat> Halloween is just a magical time of year, man. You know? And Christmas decorations may be out. But that does not mean that we still don't love this holiday. Yeah, dude. I went to Home Depot. God, dude, so. Like two days ago. Yep. They're already putting out Christmas stuff. Go to like a Home Goods store. It's not even Halloween yet. Go to Home Goods. Or Thanksgiving. Their Halloween section is three aisles. Their Christmas trees and their Christmas decor, 14. Well, I feel like <sighs> people celebrate Christmas literally from the day after Thanksgiving honestly until like january 1st it should be the it should it should be from september to halfway through november should be halloween then you have for the people that like turkey thanksgiving and then after thanksgiving go to christmas till new year's i feel like thanksgiving is just a one day holiday people aren't worrying about that all fall well, not fall you know you're 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 happy about fall well, halloween's also fall that's why i said halfway through november but I feel like it should be September first through November like fourteenth. Like Christmas should just be December first until December thirty first. Yeah. Or let let New Year's be its own thing. New Year's is its own thing, but you can always keep your Christmas tree up till after New Year's. Yeah. Don't like that. I kept my Christmas tree up one year till like March. There are some pure people, laziness. I know this dude <laughs> across the street from my parents' house. Yeah. Who had his Halloween like pumpkin blow up thing <laughs> up. <laughs> From October, yeah, <laughs> until like January. I love that. I love that. I thought what? I love that. I do. That's cool. I remember my mom saying, "Well, you know, there are pumpkins at Thanksgiving. It's it's December now. Yeah, they were, the pumpkins are frozen. Just take pumpkins it down. Are gone. I um I hate when like you you <laughs> you like pre." You do you do Halloween a little too early and you go out and buy a pumpkin and you carve the shit out of that pumpkin and then in this area it'll be like like today it's fifty five. Yeah. Your pumpkin's gonna be thriving in that yeah. weather. And then for five fucking days it's like ninety seven. Yeah. And then that hard work and three hours of carving that you put in just yeah. just fucking, that pumpkin's fucking it stinks, you're mad. Because you're not going to carve it. Yeah, they, one. you don't want to do it again. You can't, you can't, you, it's so tricky in our area when to plan the perfect time to carve the jack-o'-lantern. The week before Halloween. I just love my pumpkin being out for so much longer. But some people will put it out there for the week in October, then the weather does what it does. Somehow it's mid-October, it's still 90 fucking degrees. Yeah, it's, dude, it's so brutal. <laughs> you just then, got soppy pumpkins everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're just sitting on your steps. Now what you could do is you could just buy a pumpkin, because once you, like, a pumpkin itself has like integrity 
It's like you can keep an actual pumpkin out there for quite some time. Yeah. So if you keep it out there, but yeah. then you carve it the yeah. week of Halloween, that's the trick. There yeah, you go. that's yeah. the trick. You have to do nothing to it prior to. <laughs> you have to keep all of its integrity. It's got to sit there. <laughs> because week before, it, carve it up. <laughs> I passed by a church, uh, in at work the other day. It was uh, Friday, and we had uh, like a tropical storm weather thing happen. But this church had fucking hundreds of pumpkins outside. Mm -hmm. and it was like that nice gray rain. Oh, yeah. It just looked like that color contrast between a nice like like kind of dreary day yeah. and those bright orange pumpkins. Yeah. Oh, boy, did it ignite something in me. But then there are some people who just buy a pumpkin in October, do nothing to it, and let it sit through Thanksgiving because it's, it's fall. It's a fall decor. No, carve it. Everyone should carve a pumpkin at least once in their life. Yeah. It's an experience. I agree. Have you tried cutting from the bottom yet? No. Mm. Cutting from the bottom? You start at the bottom, bro. You know how you cut the hole in the top? Yeah. Then you move it by the stem. Uh-huh. If you cut it from the bottom, and then you use like a fork or something to pry that out, and then you clean it out, you put your candle right on the bottom, and then you set the pumpkin on top of that. Guess what? You're not worrying about lighting the candle no more. Well, why wouldn't you? You can do that either way, though, can't you? Well, you don't have to drop the candle into the top of the pumpkin. I mean, depending on how you carve up the pumpkin, you're probably just sliding it in the mouth part anyway. Mm, you don't do intricate enough pumpkins. I buy the kits. I'm like not, the super fancy I'm not ones. here doing it for a fucking event. I'm cutting out two eyes, a nose. You do legit jack-o'-lanterns. And a mouth. In yeah. my 30 years of existing, I've never done a traditional I am traditional. I want to do, I want me and you to do well, I think, traditional jack-o'-lanterns and then put them online. I think. And have I think, people vote. I think growing up, we did like some super intricate jack-o'-lantern. Yeah. And then we get just mush. Yeah, but still. Who, who gives a shit? It's still, it's fun to do. I feel like you do. You just get the bats and the cats. The traditional. Which is. Got that mouth hole where you light it, you slide that thing in there. Yeah, with the traditional jack-o'-lantern mouth, yeah, you just, unless it's super sharp teeth. Yeah, I'm not here doing all the extra. I'm not cutting from the bottom and doing all this intricate stuff. Just cut it, light it, put it in there, be done with it, because in two days, we're done. That's true. You were doing it on like the 29th of October. Remember <laughs> <laughs> two days of sitting out there. Remember first it's gone. Yeah, it's right into the trash can where the jack o' lantern. Then you bring out just a other pumpkin. Just bring out a wreath. That you've done nothing to. Bring out a wreath. Is it wreath or wreath? <laughs> W-E-R-A-T-H? Right. What the fuck did I just spell? No, I'm thinking about coral reef. Never mind. Yeah, you're thinking of a reef. Like R E E F. Yeah, you're reef. thinking of reef, <laughs> not reef. Reef like the decor, not a reef. D E E is reef. 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 What? <laughs> what is it? A reef. Reef plural. D E E S. Reefs. Oh, I'm not fucking with that. <laughs> not um, do that. I do like a good uh, fall reef. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, my, me and my sister and my nephew like going to craft shows too. That's that's definitely a lot of fun to do in fall time. Yeah, my mom would put one up for Halloween. Well, we were younger. She used like the little decal thing you put on your glass doors. Yeah, yeah. She put those up, and then like put a wreath up, wreath, wreath, one of those things up, and then for Thanksgiving, just take the same wreath still up. <laughs> I don't use that word anymore. <laughs> she used one of those things. I love it. And puts the stickers up. And then for Christmas, she would put like um, wrapping paper on the door. Yeah. It was a whole thing. Yeah. Dude, what? <laughs> You're nope. still, yeah. Are you still struggling with wreath? Oh, wreath of Franklin? <laughs> That's just a word I shouldn't use anymore. It's okay, dude. It's it's still not the butylator, so we're good. Coral oh. reef. I use a reef of Franklin. <laughs> it's a lot going on with that word. Um, yeah, man, Halloween is probably one of the, it is not probably, it is my favorite hol holiday of all time. Um, <laughs> and I, I had a feeling this was going to happen, uh, talking about Trick or Treat, because it's one of the most Halloween specific horror movies. I thought you were talking about a movie, I forgot about that. Yeah, we are talking about a movie, <laughs> um, Trick or Treat, um, uh, <laughs> uh, on a scale of one to ten, bud, uh, how do you, how do you rate Trick or Treat? I rate eight. I give it eight five. Um, I do. I love this movie, and obviously, this spawned a good 
Halloween conversation, which I'm expecting will probably happen after different episodes of ours um, this month, because it's the best time of the year. It is spooky season. It is officially spooky season, and we here at the J Squared Horror Podcast plan on doing as much we can in these 31, 31 days? Yeah. October's. 31st of Halloween. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. The 31 thing, days of Halloween. So feel free to watch Hocus Pocus and whatnot. <laughs> just had to just had to throw that. Halloween Town. Thing. Halloween Town and Hubie Halloween on Netflix. Well, Halloween Town's not classic. Bad. You're just Hubie Halloween. I know. We want, it's so funny that the, the, the one time you watch that, know, the right? first time we were yeah. sitting in a hotel for a horror convention yeah. and you didn't want to leave. You wanted to just watch yeah. that entire movie. It was it's a, it's a great it movie. It was very good, yeah. And I think, honestly, even though we have a horror podcast, we're in control of our podcast so we can decide what we do content on. And this is the month of Halloween, so we'll figure out some of these other fun episodes to do. I Should, think it would be fun to cover Halloween Town. It should be Halloween, yeah. Or both. I mean, we can. We'll just do a whole. We'll just the whole last week. We'll just do one, a Halloween theme movie every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, could you imagine the amount of work we would have to put into that? It's worth it. <laughs> it is worth it. It would actually be full and fun. Um, so yeah, that's this episode was about trick or treat slash uh, our thoughts and ideas on the <laughs> holiday of Halloween. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add about the movie or Halloween for that matter? No, I man, I feel like as far as the movie cover all of it, as far as yeah. Halloween goes, we have plenty of time to think. Yeah, about. we got plenty more time to talk about yeah. Halloween. We got yeah. a good amount in tonight, though. Um, we did. <laughs> thank you to all of our fans and supporters for checking us out. Sorry we missed you guys for a week, but like we said, we are just pre- preparing for uh, the month of October. And um, honestly, I was feeling a little under the weather as well. So thank you guys for always tuning in. Big shout out to our supporters, Jeff Balance, who does our design work. Lucky Riggs, who does our intro and our outro music. Trademark Printing, who does our printing needs. With that being said, we do have hoodies coming very, very soon. Before the end of the month, we will have official J Squared Horror hoodies that will be available for sale with our events coming up on october 22nd i will be doing a trivia at pale horse coffee and the big event that we are doing we are going back to jerry's on indian river to do another horror trivia on october 30th the day before the big day so for all of our fans please dress up please come out show jerry some support show us some support we are very, very excited about another trivia night. <laughs> you made me think of uh, Halloween 3. 27 more days till Halloween, <laughs> Halloween, <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could, like, take out those and just have them for every single one. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm just going to sing it every time. Yeah. <laughs> what day I'm is it? I'm just going to yeah. sit here like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's my alarm to wake up? Is the silver shamrock? Dude, that sounds annoying as fuck. It gets me up. I'm sure it, it does. Up. Yeah, dude. Happy, happy Halloween. I'm like <laughs> <laughs> all year round. I do that now. I paid one twenty nine for it. Okay. Is it worth it? Yeah, so worth it. it. Wakes me up. All of the all of the stock iPhone alarms I've already burned through. <laughs> okay. None of them work anymore. Or for me, is that like <laughs> nuclear bomb? <laughs> we, we, we were on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. Yeah, we're this sitting my on, own alarm. Yeah, we're sitting on a fucking airplane, and Jake has a nuclear alarm going <laughs> off. <in> the- <laughs> I just look at him like, "Are you fucking kidding me, dude? We gotta at least make it to Texas. We haven't even left Norfolk yet." Oh boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, that's just your daily alarm that yeah. you have normally set. Yeah, uh, but yes, thank you guys so much for listening to our psycho conversations <laughs> that we have that make no fucking sense. But hey, this is our podcast and this is what we do. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for always tuning into the J Squared Horror Podcast. My name's Josh. And I'm Jake. You guys have a great week. And remember, it's hip to be squared. <laughs>